Hi folks, really excited to have you on board with us where we're going to take our first steps into exploring what exactly HTML is and what it looks like. In this section I'm going to be writing out some notes as I'm talking and we're just going to kind of explore some of these basics here. So first of all, let's jump right in. What exactly is HTML? In case you're wondering what it stands for, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. I know, not a super descriptive description. Uh, what's markup? What does it mean to be a markup language? And for now, we'll just understand that this is the standard markup language used to create web pages. And an important point to make is that pretty much any web page you have, you, you see out there, um, it has HTML to represent sort of the, the skeleton of the page. You can kind of think of it as a skeleton. Um, so it's kind of the foundation upon which, say, the styling and the user act interactivity is made. You can't have either of those things without HTML. In other words, HTML basically tells your browser how to display web pages. So browser being something like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, uh, Safari, Internet Explorer, or Edge. There's all kinds of different browsers out there. And they all share the same fact that they take HTML, they figure out what do these HTML tags, what are all these elements in here, what, what does this uh, want me to represent this page as? So essentially it interprets the markup and it represents that in your browser as a web page. Now back to this markup thing, what exactly is a markup language? Um, you just really need to know that it's, it's a language designed for uh, processing the presentation of the text. So you mark up your text with certain uh, things we're going to call tags uh, and then the browser kind of interprets those tags and changes how it's displaying something. Think of it as, as taking some kind of document marking it up with a pen. Um, in our case the browser won't show the pen markings. It'll show say if you wanted to highlight a piece it's going to show that as highlighted for example. So I think this will make sense once you actually see what HTML looks like. So what does HTML look like? And maybe you've seen it before, maybe not. You might have seen it if, for example, you go to a page and you accidentally right-clicked and hit view page source. And you say, oh, geez, what's all this stuff? Well, this is, for the most part, HTML. You know, This is all HTML. Uh, this is styling stuff. That's not HTML. But down here, it continues on. This is all HTML. And you can kind of see that it's marked up in certain ways. We have this thing called a div, this thing called an h1, for example. Um, and that's what HTML looks like. So it uses, I'll put an HTML here, HTML uses tags and elements to enclose different parts of the content. So what that's going to look like is, say you wanted to represent some text. Um, and you wanted that text to be, you know, a paragraph of its own. What would that look like? Well, we would use this thing called a p tag. So here's what a tag looks like. You open it up with this kind of angled bracket. I'll put it on the line below. You put in your tag name. In our case, it's going to be P for paragraph. Um, and then you put whatever text you want in here. So I'm going to put my name is Chris in here. And then important thing to remember, for most of these tags, you do have to put a closing tag. So this text is kind of sandwiched between a closing P tag that looks like this. Notice it looks pretty similar, except there's a slash in front of it. So everything here is contained within this p tag. This entire thing makes an HTML element, which means in our markup, if we did another p tag after this, like so, p, what's your name, for example, and then I remember to close it off. These are two separate elements. So this is one element, this is another element, and because these are in separate paragraph tags, um, they're not going to sit next to each other on the page. So this is one paragraph, and this denotes another paragraph. So once you kind of see it like that, it starts to make sense when we say it's a markup language. We're marking up what kind of looks like regular text, but we're marking it up with these tags to make them into elements. And then the browser will interpret that and represent it in a way that you are used to on a web page. So I'd say once you, once you kind of get the hang of marking up your code in HTML, it does become pretty simple. There is a bit of a learning curve, though. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to paste in uh, just kind of some boilerplate HTML code that you'll see on pretty much any site. So here we go. Let's explore what some of these things are um, before we start writing some more HTML of our own. So you notice that 
pretty much any page you'll visit. If you do, like what I did over here, you can always right click. You can view the source of any page you go to. Here I'm just on example.com. You can always view the source. And you'll notice that every page always has certain elements. For example, every page needs to have this doc type HTML uh, tag. Everyone needs to start with an HTML tag, needs a head, and then it has a bunch of stuff below that in a body, and then it closes those tags off at the end over there. So what we'll do is we'll kind of explore each of these, and I'll add a little comment here afterwards, uh, just with a pound sign, to denote what these things are. So what I'm writing here, it's not markup, just consider these as kind of extra comments after each of these, um, and then we'll write some HTML later on uh, in this kind of style. So what this doc type HTML does is basically it informs the browser that the document type is HTML. This is required because, you know, back in the bad old days of the internet, there were different doc types that you could use. These days, really, you only really see doc type HTML, so you can just think of this as a historical artifact, really. Um, just know that your page needs this in order to render it out as HTML. That's all we really need to know about that, and you'll always notice that the top, this at the top of the page. So, for example, just to bring it up again, you know, we'll see it on this page, uh, doc type HTML. If we go to a different site, for example, here I am on google.ca, I can inspect or view the page source. Um, in this code, it's kind of all compressed, but we don't need to worry about that. I just wanted to bring your attention to this fact that we have doc type HTML up at the very top. Right? And I can kind of zoom in so you can see that a bit better. Doc type HTML up at the top. So it's just something that every page has and is required. Again, just to indicate to the browser to render it out as HTML. Next, we have this HTML piece. Uh, HTML will basically wrap all the content. So wraps all content on the page. Notice, just like with this P tag, our HTML, we open it, we have all of the content of our page, and then we close it. Um, so that's what this HTML tag does. It just kind of wraps everything up in an HTML element. Again, this is just another thing that's required to get it to render out properly on the browser. And again, to bring our attention back to example.com, let's view the page source. Does this open with HTML? Yep, it sure does. It has some stuff, and then it closes at the very bottom. Um, notice that the order is important. So if this were closed off too early, say we open it here, then we close HTML immediately right here, for example, well, our page won't render properly. So it is important if you are kind of nesting your elements like this, and we'll see this plenty when we're doing examples, um, to kind of do the, uh, close them off in reverse order. All right, so for example, we have HTML and then head and then title, uh, head and title. Well, title is closed off right here, head is closed off here, um, and then we have body opening and closing, and then at the very end, we close the HTML. Um, so just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that if you do close your element, make sure you're closing it in the correct place. And believe me, we'll have plenty uh, to say about that later as well. You know, I'm going to move these guys over a little bit more. Uh, so next we have this head element. So notice it opens here and then closes here, and then we have a couple things in there. Um, so this is essentially where you put contents you don't necessarily want to show to your visitors. So you put content here that shouldn't be shown to visitors. Uh, so for example, and I'll just add another comment here, e.g. if you need to link to style sheets, also known as CSS, or link to JavaScript files. And that might not make sense to you right now. We will be exploring that as well. Um, just basically know that you can have a style sheet or a JavaScript file that's a separate file that you load in to your HTML if you link to it correctly in the head of your document. Right? And if we take a look again at example.com, within our head here, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. So we have this meta character set. We have some other stuff. We have some style tags in here. And then the head is closed off right there. And this character set, notice it has a meta tag here. So this will essentially 
set the character set. So sets the character set to UTF-8. Um, this one is pretty much almost always set to uh, UTF-8, which don't really need to know too much about. You just have to know that it, it includes most characters used in language, so which includes uh, most characters used in pretty much any language as far as I'm aware. So that would be things like uh, Roman letters, uh, Japanese characters, ampersands, all sorts of stuff. So it's just setting the character set for this page. And, you know, again, we can take a look at what they're doing on example.com. They have that set as well to UTF-8. And you'll pretty much almost always see this set to UTF-8 in my experience. The title here, this is something that your visitors would see. And this sets the title uh, on your page, essentially. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so if we look here, what did they set the title as on their example.com uh, as? And it's in a different order. That's OK, though. So up here, we can see they set the title as example domain. And if you notice, my tab up at the top is called example domain. So this is where the title will show up. And it'll also show up, you know, if I add this to my favorites, it's going to list it as example domain, unless I change it, for example. Uh, so that's how the title is set up uh, in the tab in this case. So that's what that does. That's really one of the few times something in your head will be visible to the visitors uh, on your page. Okay, so title is kind of self-explanatory. Um, and then we close the head after you've done all you need to do in your head. And we start a new element here, body. So we do an opening body tag. And then in here is where you put whatever content you want to be displayed on your website. So, you know, again, we'll take a look at example.com. We'll just ignore this style stuff for now. Take a look at body. Um, it has a couple things inside of it. So you can see it has something called an H1. It has a P for a paragraph. It has this other weird H A href thing. It closes the div, it closes the body, and it closes the HTML. Right? And what does this look like on the actual page? Well, everything in here is being rendered on the page. Um, so there's some styling applied to it, which we don't need to worry about. But there's a header a paragraph, and then a separate paragraph, which if you look at the markup, and if you kind of know what you're looking at, it starts to kind of make sense. So this is what's known as a header tag. So it's an H1. So this is the header that says example domain. OK, that matches to that. We have a paragraph with a bunch of text in it. OK, that looks like that's this text. And then we see it entered a new paragraph. And that new paragraph has some kind of link to IANA.org slash domain slash example. And what does that look like if we take it from the markup and view it in the browser? Well, oh, OK, that's a link. So again, the browser is just interpreting all of this markup and is saying, oh, this is how you want me to display it? OK, here you go. Here's your title. Here's the content you wanted me to show. So in other words, the body here uh, will contain, I'll put my comment over here, contains all the content you want to show visitors, which means if on my page I wanted to show a paragraph tag just saying, hello, welcome to my page with a smiley face, I could do that. Notice that I put it inside the opening and closing body tags, and then I just need to remember to close my paragraph tag. And usually there's indentation that you can do in HTML to make it easier to kind of parse out to your human eyes. So if I indent this, it's kind of easy to see that. OK, so this is actually, this P is actually a child of the body element. So it's contained within body. That's why these parts are indented there. And again, that's, that's really for human benefit because uh, the browser will usually ignore white space in your HTML like that. So those are the really, really the basics. That's all we need really to get started writing some simple HTML. Um, we need to have some idea of what markup language is. We need to have some concept of elements and tags. And once we have an understanding of that, it makes it easier to kind of start learning how to write some HTML.